Hello, this is Darkest One and coming back to you with Armour Tutorial Zeus with Mods. Uh, this is part two of the Achilles videos. Um, if you remember in the last one, we covered the um, AI behavior and the buildings section. Don't worry, there's still loads to go. So uh, we'll jump right into it, shall we? Okay, today we're looking at the arsenal and probably a couple of others, it just depends uh, how long it takes. Um, so, let's start. For this one to work, this is not the one you can stick on players. Remember, you can't edit players in any way, shape or form, except, as we found out, if you're using ambient animation. So, breaks draws a little bit, but all part of the fun, isn't it? So, Let's imagine a scenario where, well, we're in, I can never pronounce these names, I'm going to call it Saitara, Deeratar, this place, yeah, I, I can never pronounce these names right, um, and we've, well, let, let's get a squad out, shall we, so let's say we've got eight players playing today, just for argument's sake, because I'm doing this on LAN again, so, here we go. Here's our eight players. If you remember last time we had Fish Licker 505. Well imagine is he's still here and he's been joined by other people. So this ad for Arsenal is used mostly for the AI vehicles and obviously anything else as well. I mean you can stick it on the supply boxes and whatnot that you can find in the empty section. And if you just type in the top, I'm sure you'll find it quicker than I will. <laughs> Uh, so let's say, for example, we have a. Ooh, let's have a cargo one. That's not the one I thought it was. Yeah, I click the wrong one by accident. No, I didn't. I, yes, I did click the wrong one by accident. You know, so we got Yammer. Right. Now, as part of your scenario, you could have said um, they've taken the town of. Oh, theater. I'm going to call it theater. I don't know why. Town of theatre and they now need to rearm and resupply. Uh, and you're going to be extra super duper kind to them and let them have zoo, uh, arsenal. <laughs> this is where this comes in. All you've got to do is click this, select the uh, box or vehicle or whatever you want to use and arsenal is now added. I will show you. I will drag this guy over here. I will quickly take control of him, like so. Boom. Right, and now the arsenal should show up. There you go, arsenal. We have it. So uh, that lets them use that. Um, oh, actually, while I'm thinking about it. Yes, there you go. If you hold control and double click the left mouse button, you instantly take command of that AI unit. So uh, a bit quicker than just using this remote control. So a bit of a nice little shortcut for you. Uh, you can then also, if say they've got, for example, five minutes to rearm and resupply. Once that five minutes is up, you can then remove the arsenal. So hopefully it's worked. No, my base is not. There you go. You can no longer have arsenal. So that could be quite useful. You could say um, something along the lines of there's been a supply drop, uh, I don't know, northeast of your position. Um, it has got arsenal on it, however, it will disappear after five minutes, ten minutes, something like that. You know, make them run for it a bit. So if they really, really, really want their favorite gun, you tell them you've got five minutes to get it. <laughs> Once that five minutes up, that's it. So it could add a bit of um, fast pace action for them, or make, you know, um, something, something along those lines, just make them sweat for it a bit. Or it could use it as a reward, there you go. You know, if you take over this, kill this many guys, you get a reward, you get to use arsenal, something like that. Moving on, now this copy to clipboard, the way this works is, um, for example, if I open up the inventory uh, somehow, which is the cargo button here, 
we have first aid kit times 10. Um, let's just add some random things in just to show you. Okay, right. So click on cargo. Um, I might have to go out and come back in again. And click. Okay. There we go. So now we've got six ADRs, seven four fives, one ACO, and ten first aid kits. Now, if I do this, copy the clipboard. Just click on it. You can see they all come here again. See it? Just press Control C. And that copies it. Now, if I put down a completely empty uh, vehicle, so let's just put down a hunter for argument's sake. I'll sh prove it's empty. Hmm. Okay, this seems to be really not wanting to do what I wanted to do today. Hello? There we go. Oh wow, it's got loads of stuff. Right, so I'll clear it, press OK. Press OK again just to show you. Now, if I go here, paste inventory, click on the empty vehicle, click on replace, or you can do combine if it's got some stuff in it already. Control V. You have to click on the box first. Control V. There you go. So everything that was in here is now in this one. And I'll show you. Well, it really does not want to work with me today. There you go. So this saves you having to go into it and finding them in the areas and selecting it. It, it just makes it easier. So you could have like, an ammo cache here. Ammo cache, I don't know, up here somewhere where it's got exactly the same stuff. So at least it's all consistent for them. Um, which can be quite useful. Uh, you could use it in a, well, like just an ammo cache. They're low on bullets, you know. Airdrop something, boom, here you go, all yours. Exactly the same stuff as you expect, so there's no worrying, no, nothing like that. Uh, create custom. Oh, sorry. This actually does do an airdrop for you, so you can choose what you want. As we're NATO, we'll choose that. The vault inventory is usually uh, most used items, so it could be first aid kits, it could be a couple of guns, it could be ammo, it could be uh, maybe a couple of body armor, backpacks, stuff like that. But we'll, uh, we'll have a look. There you go. Supply drops just came in. And you get a ton of loads of options, don't you? See? Now this VA means that um, virtual arsenal. So if I am correct, which I'm probably not, it's got arsenal on it. So there you go. And then you got your inventory. See, there's nothing in there, but because it had that VA written by the, whoops, by the um, items, it means it's got Arsenal ready built in. So it saves you a bit of a double clicking thing. And if I now exit him, thank you, Bob. You've been very useful today. Now, uh, that's it for the arsenal. Uh, this makes it a lot simpler instead of you going into the uh, inventory doing the infinite symbol. And also means you can have it on multiple areas. And it's just quicker, to be honest. So that's the arsenal. Nice and simple. Audio, no real change. Buildings, we covered. Filament tools. Uh, I must admit I have never used these. Mostly because it's the same functions you get in the editor. So you got the execution codes, you got a function viewer, you got, uh, so for example, on this, you can write a code, um, oh, I don't know, something like, um, oh, I can't remember off the top of my head to be honest with you. Um, you got your function viewer, so here you go. So this is all your functions that you get in your standard um, editor. Basically this means you can do it on the fly in Arsenal. That's all that does. I'm not really going to cover it much because I don't use it often to be honest. And you got your some pre-built bits and bobs. Um, so you guys have a play around with that. 
you might find it useful, you might not. I just deleted the wrong thing. That was genius. Um, but yeah, that's more more than advanced. That's quite expert level stuff. That because you got to know all the code, you got to do all sorts of stuff. So we'll leave that. Environment. Um, pretty much the same. Uh, slight differences. Advanced weather change means instead of it just suddenly changing to rain or sunshine or fog or whatever, it does it over a gradual period of time. So it makes it a bit more realistic, which is quite useful. Because then what you could do is, uh, let's say if you have to set it to smooth. We'll just do a fog for an example. So usually it takes about maybe a minute or two. Depends. Um, so on this point you could do a chatter like I've shown before. I could say warning fog setting in or something like that just to let them know. And then I don't know how long it takes but then eventually it will become foggy. So we'll, uh, we'll leave it a bit and see what happens. Ah, there we go. You can see it start getting... It's getting foggy over here. Can you see it? Very slightly. Or is that just the zoo stuff? No, it's probably the zoo stuff. <laughs> I'm getting my hopes up. Uh, earthquakes. Well, we'll move on while we're waiting. Very simple. You just make an earthquake. Um, as Zeus, you won't... You'll hear it, but you won't feel it. Um... The players, however, they'll definitely feel it. I think the camera shakes a bit as well. If you play the Apex Protocol campaign, um, you, in the last mission you get the earthquakes as you're trying to defuse the weapon. Exactly the same stuff. So you could use it for, well, anything you want really. You could say, secret weapon testing, you got to uh, take over the base. Um, or you could do it as part of your, your general scenario. It could be your... Uh, the area you're fighting is prone to um, earthquakes, you know, so if you're fighting in the town, be careful because it can damage buildings. So as I'll show you, remember you can change it as you want. So intensity is how strong you want it. Uh, it can damage buildings or not, entirely up to you, and how far it affects. So that is the strongest setting. Wow. Okay, that was a lot more buildings than I thought it would be. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that many. So yeah, if you're doing uh, some uh, close quarter battles, could make it quite interesting. Especially if they're halfway through clearing a building and suddenly someone screams earthquake, get out, you know. Use it how you wish. Uh, next is set date. Pretty obvious, you set the date. <laughs> <laughs> Simple as that. And the time, so you could have it up to 2050 or you could have it in 1982. So, wherever you want. Uh, what's the date today? It is the... I can't think off the top of my head. 23rd, I believe. So it's 23rd, 2019. And it's November. Or is it 23rd? Uh, no, that's, no, it's not November, it's October. Doi. And the current time is 16.22. 22, 20, uh, that's close enough. And then a little pop-up thing will show them, telling them. It's November 16.20. Ah, there you go. Right there. There you go. Oh, huh. So you could use it for your, uh, well, for example, remember on this post process it had that black and white, and I said, oh, that'd be good to use as a, a, um, oh, what do you call it, flashback type stuff. See, because it even works when you're, when you're a player. So what you could do is, as part of your mission, you could do, well, obviously you wouldn't do this first. You do. Um, you do your normal, and then you could do set date. Uh, whoop, go back, 1982, January the 11th at uh, I don't know, eight in the morning. Oops, wrong button. And then that sets itself. 
just there, and then boom, there you go, you're doing your flashback. Cool, huh? So that's how you could do that. Um, moving on. Equipment. This is incredibly useful and the fog has not set in yet. I wonder why. Unless I'm missing it. It's somewhere else. No, let me check. I have just realised why it didn't work. Because I forgot to set the level. So I'll quickly go back and show you this one. Uh, advanced weather change it was smooth. So the fog altitude and set it two meters above the ground. Hopefully it will work this time. I completely forgot about that bit, sorry. I was having too much fun with the earthquakes. So while that's doing that I'll do the um next bit. So oops, here's our rifle squad. Again, now add NVD tactical light or IR. NVD is your night vision devices, your tactical light is your flashlight, and your IR is those grenades I showed you. So you can force them to have lights. See, it got rid of their NVR, and now they've got lights on. NVR, NVG, so I know what I meant. Uh, then you can you can change it how you want so you could Well, how you could use this is if you're doing say this is the enemy an enemy squad So let, let's get, in it, get rid of them Let's put an enemy squad over here somewhere shall we and I'll show you what you can do with it Right, oh no, let's have mm, Sentry Okay, so we've got our little sentry squad they're not expecting any um, anyone in the area so they haven't got MVQ and they've only got flashlights so now what you do is to make sure they use it you use this toggle tactical light IR laser so you I you always use forced on and forced off it's just easier I mean you can use automatic so it adjusts com depending on the time of uh, day your mission is and that but that's entirely up to you I mean most games you play either during the night you don't or during the day you don't have a a long period of time where it can go between one or the other but it's entirely up to you so we'll turn it on I will now show you the darkness that sounded weird but there you go there you go you got it on Sometimes the whole group doesn't do it. I'm not entirely sure why, but I mean you can just quickly go through them. So there you go. They've got their uh, uh, flashlights on, and they can now be seen miles away, more or less. There you go. Just about make them out. Um, now I will show you the tactical IR. So now we'll give them NVD, entire group, we'll give them pointers instead. And then we'll make them use it, or we'll force them to use it. So forced off, forced on. Uh, unfortunately I don't think you can just, no you can't really see it in this can you? But never mind, I mean uh, when you're playing as um, them they'll probably see them. I don't really think you can see them that well uh, right now, but never mind. Um, then you got this attach and the attach effect. So it can be you can stick a oh IR grenade on one of the guys. There you go. Then you can um, take it off. Oh, I don't take him off. Oh yeah, I've had that a few times where it decided to be incredibly stubborn and stay on him. I don't know why, it just doesn't. Be careful if you delete them because then you get a random floating IR grenade. So uh, use that one at your discretion. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's a very uh, temperamental thing.
But when it does work right, it, it's great. It's really awesome. Okay, uh, now these toy optics are mostly for uh, this type of stuff. So let's say we got H and G going down. Oops, nearly killed him. Go down there like that. How do we move toy optics? So he can use them and he can use thermal if he wants. So basically now the toy it. Uh, now has the option to use NVG and thermal. Um, that's probably more useful for um, actual players and not AI because it makes no real difference for them to be honest. So uh, just use play around with it. You can use it as part of your story campaigns, or you can make it harder for the players. You know stuff like that. Now. Fire support. Okay. If you remember the last time we covered this in the basics, I had way too much fun with it. <laughs> and I think I spent about 20 minutes explaining why using CAS is awesome. Um, probably a bit of an over exaggeration, but you know. So, uh, how this works is I'll start with this create target. Now, let's say we've got. Uh, well, for example, let's say we've got uh, we just took over this base. We'll call it um, well town. Sorry, called it lost control. Just for you'll see why in a minute. And where are we? We are here. So let's stick them over here. We, oh yes, that'll be perfect. So what we'll do is we'll stick a couple of artillery over here. Indeed. I'll put two down. Okay, what the? Wow, that was weird. Never had that before. Hmm. Strange. Oh, I think the fog's setting in that. No, the fog's still not set in yet. Oh, I don't know. It's being weird. It does work, trust me. There we go. Right. So we got them ready. That's our fire, fire area, sorry. So now we use this artillery fire mission. Click on one, you can do that. You can use the marker, which we put down, or grid coordinate if you want. There's two units, number of rounds, they'll fire two each. They'll use their um, 155 HE shells. Target, if you've got more than one, you can choose random, you can choose the nearest, you can choose the furthest, or you can choose the one you've called it. We'll just do nearest because there's only one. Now, precision means how accurate they are. Uh, so, if you put the target slap bang in the middle of the town, they will always fire at it. And uh, for each number you type in, so if I say type in a 50 meter radius, that, that's what it is. So, from, you've got the target in the center and you've got an imaginary line that's 50 meters around it, they will shoot anywhere within that line. So, I'll, I'll show you the difference. So, we do the zero. Now, if you watch, they will fire. Right, there's one. So I think it said about 30 seconds. So let's just watch it. Oh, we can hear them firing off already. But it should be pretty close to this target. If it misses now, I'm going to cry. <laughs> Yeah, I really don't like me on this game, I don't know why. One thirty seconds, huh? We'll get there in there you go. One. So it should be waiting for another three now, I think. Oh, oh that was really off course, wasn't it? Hmm. Well, anyway, it's pretty accurate in terms of it's close enough. Um but I mean, it's not going to be 100% precise, so it just does not work like that. So now I'll show you where the radius are, let's say 100 meters. Uh, just to prove, I'll fire four rounds each, so that'll be eight instead. Uh, oh, it's 31 seconds, okay, it tells you up here how long it will take, so it gives you an idea. I do like watching them fire, I don't know why. 
So now I need to zoom out a bit. So if you imagine that's the centre, it's an imaginary line around it. I don't think it shows on the map. No, it doesn't. So here we go. Any minute now. Hopefully. <laughs> There you go, there's one. So you see one's right here. They should, there you go. See they're a lot more spread out now, aren't they? Which is good. It's. Uh, I'd prefer to make them as inaccurate as possible. Because uh, then they don't know where it's going to land. I mean, they don't know anyway, but you know, if you're running up the street and you suddenly see one land over here, you're probably going to run this way or this way. And you start seeing some more land around you, it's a bit... It's one of those. Or you could have multiple of these dotted around where they are and then set it to random and they'll just fire at any particular one. It's entirely up to you how you do that. Next is oppressive fire. I will get a... Hmm. Yes, one of these will be better to use to show you. So we got our little guy. Now if we imagine he's CSAT for a minute and we got NATO forces. We can use suppressive fire to uh there we go, so duration that's in seconds remember. So they'll aim for the create targets as well. So that's really quite useful, especially if you know they're going to overtake a uh, town. If you put loads of these down and then bring up reinforcements, you can f use the vehicles to do suppressive fire while all the enemy troops get out, and you know you can make it quite uh, quite intense, really. Um, so just I'll just show you this. So oh, quickly go through this. You got your normal. Wow, this is more for the, um, if you use an infantry, so they can be prone, crouched, or stand. But because we're like that, it really doesn't matter. Line up. That means that if you've got a unit of, well, let's say you've got a rifle squad, they'll form a line before they fire. It looks really cool. I'll, I'll show that in a minute, just to, um, because it's a bit one-sided with this. You, know, you get to choose your weapon, so if you've got a whole load of weapons, they'll use that. Fire mode, you can do automatic, small bursts or semi-automatic. I like using automatic, especially on guns like this. I'm going to do it for 30 seconds. Let's watch him. There you go. So he's firing over here. Kind of. There you go, you can just see the traces. So now if you imagine you're... Um, you're uh, over here being shot at by CSAT doing that. You'd want to get your heads down, wouldn't you? Okay, so next I'll show the other version, but this time with um, a squad. I'll use a rifle squad just to show a bit better. Now we we'll click suppressive fire. You only need to click on one, guys. It doesn't matter who you click on. So yeah, they're going to suppress Bravo. They're going to crouch. They're going to line up. They're going to use them, and then they're going to do. First, talking guns just means it's random. That, that's all it is. And they're going to do 30 seconds. So I'll show you the talking guns in a bit. Now, if you watch, they'll line up. Just like as though you were commanding the squad, similar thing. And then they'll all open fire. Well, once the slow pokes turn up, they will. Give them a minute. Although technically they'd probably be dead by now if uh, it was a real firefight, but you know, they're AI, you gotta give them some lean way. Do it. So if you remember, that's where the target is. So. So then what. Wow, that gunfire is really loud, isn't it? So uh, what you can do with that is, uh, if you've got, say, reinforcements turning up, you bring them up here, uh, well, see that, I mean. You bring up the reinforcements, then you'll use that on the vehicles. They'll do suppressive fire wherever you want. 
these guys will jump out or the, if they got infantry they'll jump out and once they jump out they'll move up you can make them to suppressive fire second squad can move up suppressive fire that squad here would move up suppressive fire so on and so on so that you're forcing the players back hopefully I mean obviously they'll be taking them down at times but more than likely they'll be sticking to cover keeping their heads down and just trying to stay alive and you can make it really intense for them I mean seriously intense I mean it works on most vehicles I even think it works on um, airplane, uh, not airplane sorry um, helicopters so actually we'll quickly uh, quickly show that I think the Blackfoot would be best to use wouldn't it Whoop. so suppressive fire he'll go on Bravo as well now he's got different choices so let's use the minigun we use a burst 30 seconds let's do it or maybe not ah maybe you don't want to oh no there you go he's doing it Oh no, I had it on random, didn't I? So he's, he's just firing anywhere. He's really enjoying himself, isn't he? So then I'll also show you with the... Uh, these. Automatic. Target Bravo. So hopefully you should do it. Maybe not. <laughs> okay, right, you can stop that now. Wow. That's insane. Okay. Not, it doesn't work as well as I was hoping. But um, you can use that for cinematics, though. You could have him... Um, well, for example, let's say you got a helicopter here, you got your enemies coming this way, you could just make him so it looks like he's shooting up towards the enemy or something, you know. So, it doesn't always work, but still fun. Oh yeah, so I was going to show you the uh, talking gun, wasn't I? I'll quickly show you now. I'm not bothered with the lineup. Like this. Uh, we'll just do uh, 20 seconds on this one, just to show you. So uh, yeah, vehicles are a bit uh, a bit different, but there you go. There you go. That's a talking gun. Not as impressive, I must admit, but it works. Okay, advanced cast. Whoops. Oh yes, you need your uh, airplane flying around to do this, so I'll just stick a random one in the air. Ready for order. Whoop. There you go. Now you got to be quick to catch them, so... Advanced cast. Click on that. Target. We'll do it on Bravo. You get to pick what you want, so we'll use minigun just to show. Number of strikes. Offset is how accurate they are, so I'll just put 10, so it's not going to be smack on. It's going to be pretty close. Where's the aircraft gone? Here we go. So he's coming around. These guys probably want to move out the way just in case. So what he'll do is he'll climb up and then he'll boom. But this is the same as this cast, except it, the plane doesn't just appear out of nowhere. It, it's actual. It's more realistic. So this is really good for Milsom stuff. So. Keep that in mind. I mean, it also looks a lot better anyway when you're just playing it. Takes longer, but there you go. Uh, once he's done, uh, what else? we'll have a look and see what else we got. Oh, here he comes. I think he's on the way now. Oh, wow. He goes really high up, don't he? There he is. 
So an ember's going for target Bravo. There you go. And that's advanced cast. Oh, and he even drops a couple of bombs for you. And then he flies off and he go, does whatever you want him to do next. So you can make him land somewhere else. You could, I don't know, anything you want. So yeah, that's uh, that's up to fire support. Uh, that's been. A, uh, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to continue in another video because um, it's taken a lot longer than I thought to get through these. <laughs> so, but uh, I hope you're enjoying them. Um, hopefully, you're learning quite a lot. Um, what I might do at some point is, I think I mentioned in the last video, is do a video designed around the Milsim. So uh, I can show you that. Uh, I might do it with my Milsim unit. Unfortunately, I've only got three people in it so far. Uh, I'd love to have more people join up, and I can do do stuff for this. I can do live uh, recordings of operations. We can do um, all sorts, really. So yeah, if I mean, I'll put the link in the description below. I'll again put the mods link below as well, and I will hopefully see you in the next video. Um, yes, if you did like it, do please subscribe and leave a comment and a like. That would be great. Thank you. I hope to see you soon. Ta-ta for now.